What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn about a service called HTTP bin which can be very useful for you if you are debugging testing or playing around with your web application or a networking application so let us get right into it. All right, so HTTP bin is, as the website already states, a simple HTTP request and response service. And this basically means that they provide multiple different endpoints that we can send requests to, to get specific types of responses. So you can see them listed down below here. We're not going to cover all of them in this video today, but you can see we have basic HTTP methods, for example. We have authentication endpoints, we have status code endpoints, we have dynamic data, cookies and stuff like that. And depending on the endpoint you use and depending on the parameters that you provide, you will get a different response. So for example, you can force specific status codes by using these endpoints here. And you can maybe already see why this may be useful because you can use this service to troubleshoot, to debug, to test your application, or to just play around with networking a little bit, to play around maybe with a request module in Python to see what happens when you provide different parameters and when you get certain responses, like uh, maybe some tokens because you authenticated yourself with an endpoint. Um, and we're going to cover a bunch of these endpoints today. I want to show you why they can be useful in troubleshooting in debugging. And we're going to get started with some very basic responses here. Now, to follow along with this video, you will need an external Python package, which almost everyone has installed already, which is the request package. So you're going to open up your command line and you're going to install using pip or pip3 the requests module. And once you have it installed, you can import it in your Python script by saying import requests. And the first thing you can do very simple is you can send a uh, very basic get request to this get endpoint here. So you can just go ahead and say response equals and then requests dot get and we can pass here. Maybe we should have a base URL to not always retype uh, the base URL. So we're going to say HTTPS colon slash slash HTTP bin dot org. Uh, we're not going to provide a slash here. And then we're going to say here base URL plus and then get. Now, this will give you a response and we're going to get the JSON version of that response. So the dictionary basically. Uh, and I'm going to exclude one field here just for the sake of this video, because one of the fields that you get as a response is the so called origin field. This displays basically my IP address or the IP address of uh, the request or where the request came from. So I'm going to exclude this field just to not show my IP address here. So I'm going to say response, or actually, I'm going to say Dell response, and then origin. And then we can print the response object here. And what you can see here is we get a basic HTTP response. So we can see the user agent that was used was Python requests. You can, of course, also change that. So I can go ahead now, for example, and say that the user, or actually I need to say headers equals and then a dictionary. And I can say user dash agent and I can say something. Now it's lagging, come on, something else. And this should then be displayed in the user agent field. So you can see here the user agent was used with something else. And of course, you can provide a Firefox user agent, for example, uh, to mimic the behavior, but you can see you have a bunch of different fields here, but not too much. This is just a very basic endpoint, you can play around with this to see what happens when you provide certain parameters, because what you can also do is you can provide um, query parameters, so URL parameters, I can say question mark. Uh, and then I can say maybe test equals hello and then maybe and other equals world for example and then i can run this and you can see i get arguments here arguments itself is again a dictionary and you can see other is mapped to world and test is ma uh, mapped to hello those are just the url parameters that i passed here um so yeah this is a very basic endpoint now what we can also do is we can uh, post to an endpoint. So we can say instead of get, I want to now post. And when we post, we don't use URL parameters, we use a payload. So we provide uh, a payload that we pass or data that we pass to the post uh, endpoint. And we can create this data here, for example, as a dictionary. So I can say data one is going to be hello. Data two is going to be world, for example. 
And then all I have to do is I have to pass it here as data, data equals data. I'm gonna again remove the origin field to not show the IP address. And then you can see I get an error because I made some mistake. What was that? Oh, I send a get request when I should send a post request. There you go. So we're sending a post request to the post endpoint with the data being the data. And then you can see here in the response, we get uh, the form that was passed. So the input form, uh, the data form was data one, hello data two world. <clears throat> and again, you can see the header file or the he header content here as well. So again, very basic. Let's move on to something that might be a little bit more useful because sometimes you wanna have your application tested in all the different cases. So in the best case, when your application sends a request, it usually gets a 200, requ uh, a 200 response. So a 200 status code response or 200 and something. It doesn't get usually uh, a 400 or a 500 uh, response, which would be client error or server error. And the problem is sometimes you will get these exceptions, sometimes you will get these status codes, and then you should be able to handle them properly. And to see if your script or your application is able to handle these status codes, you might want to force them in a way. And maybe when you're using an actual endpoint, it's hard to force uh, a specific status code because you have to do something to cause that. Uh, so it's easier to just send a request to an endpoint that will just give you the status code you want. So let's say I want to send a get request here to the base URL status, and then I can pass a specific status code, for example, 200 to force a 200 response code. So when I print this, then um, actually for this, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna print the response like this. So I'm going to say request get. And what you can see here is I get a 200 response um, as a response. And I can also say, for example, I want to have a 304. And I'm going to get a 304. Or I can say something like I want to have a 404 not found. And I can get that as a response as well. So I can say I want to have this status code as a response. And in this case, of course, I don't have an application that can react to this. But maybe I have an application that sends requests and if I get a certain status code, it might trigger a certain branch and I can test this by forcing that status code using HTTP bin. So that's also a, a very useful thing here. We can also work with authentication. We can go through the process of authentication and then keeping the authenticated client. Um, and for this, for example, we can say username equals and then maybe Let's just, or actually, I'm not going to use an input field. I'm just going to provide some values here. So test user password is going to be equal to, to test pass. And then we're going to just say response equals requests dot get. And what we're going to do is we're going to send again to the base URL, but we're going to add to this an F string, and this is going to be basic dash auth for basic authentication, obviously, and then we're going to use curly brackets for the username. And then also for the password. And then I'm going to say here, auth equals and then we're going to pass a tuple of username and password. All right. So response dot Jason is going to be our response. And I'm not sure if we have an origin field here, I'm going to try to delete it. If this causes an exception, we probably don't have one. But afterwards, I'm going to just print the response. Okay, we don't have an origin. So I'm going to just print this. And you can see now that the authentication was successful. Now, of course, whatever you pass here is going to be successful because uh, that's the way we call this. So of course, I can also change this here to uh, maybe hello world. And uh, then you're going to see that it doesn't work because the username and the password are not the same. But provided that the username and password are the same here, if we're sending the correct authentication data to the correct endpoint, we're going to get um, a successful authentication. But again, you can you can see what happens when you enter wrong data, you can see what happens when you enter correct data. And you can then test if your application is able to handle that. Um, so that's also a nice use case. Also, maybe you're authenticating yourself with a Bera token. So you're not authenticating yourself with username and password, but with a token. Uh, so you might say token is equal to 
uh, I don't know, whatever this is my token. And then you can say uh, the headers of your requests are going to be equal to and then you specify the authorization field and the authorization field is going to be an F string. The important thing is that it has this bearer in the beginning and then the token will be accepted no matter what the token is. Um, actually in capital letters, but the important thing is that you have the right format with this bearer space and then the token itself. Uh, and then we can just go ahead and say response equals request dot get. And we basically send this again to the base URL plus and then slash bearer. And then the headers are going to be equal to the headers. And then we can maybe this time let's go ahead and try to have an if else branch. So let's say we say if the response status code is equal to 200. So if the request um, or if the authentication was successful, we're going to say that the response is just going to be response.json. Uh, and we're going to delete the origin field if it exists. Again, you don't have to delete it. This is just for me here in the video. Um, and then we can print that. So we can print the response. Otherwise, if it doesn't work, we're going to just print authentication failed or auth failed. All right, so when I run this, uh, we don't have an origin. So let's remove this. But you can see authenticated true, whatever, this is my token. Um, and then we can also change this, for example, and I can say hello instead of Bera, and then you will see authentication failed because this is no Bera token. So you can also uh, try to to see what happens there in your application to troubleshoot it. Uh, what else can we do? We have the Bera, we have um, cookies. Cookies are interesting because with cookies, um, you can see what happens in your application when you get some cookies from the server. So we can say here, cookies is equal to a dictionary. I'm going to say cookies R is going to be the key. And actually, let's, let's not define it like that. Let's do it like always. We're going to say cookies R and then key is going to be working. For example, we can say response is equal to requests get and then base URL plus F string. Or actually, we don't need an F string, we can just say cookies. And uh, the cookies are going to be equal to the cookies. So we can pass a dictionary of cookies for the response manually. Uh, and then we can just go ahead and say response equals respond uh, request, sorry. Uh, or actually, no, we already did that response equals response.json. This is what I wanted to do, delete the origin field if it exists. And then print a response. Again, no origin. There you go. So you can see this is what we have in the cookies. And you can scroll down here to set cookies, for example. So you can see, um, or this one is maybe even better cookies set name value, and this would return cookies uh, to us. So for example, if I go ahead now, and I say I don't have any cookies yet, uh, I want to send a request to cookies and then set and then what was it name value. So maybe test cookie and I don't have any cookies to pass here. Um, let's see again, I gotta for for the sake of safety, I gotta always try to delete the origin, even though this means we have some exceptions here. But we don't have it. There you go. So now you can see we have the cookies. And the interesting thing is we can also see that this is the case that this works in a session, for example, so I can say session, or let's just call it s is going to be equal to request dot session, then I'm going to say session dot get, uh, maybe want to print a response. But I think we can also print uh, session cookies. And then you can see that we have here uh, test equals cookie for HTTP bin.org. It's part of the cookie jar of the session. So you can also play around with that if you want to. Um, and then maybe two more things that could be interesting and the rest again, just go through the different endpoints and try to see what you can do with them. You have way more that I'm going to show here today. But I want to show two more. And one of them is 
the delay, uh, or actually, no, this is the second one. The first one is the redirect. So you can um, also try to see what happens when your, uh, when your application is being redirected. So it actually gets something, so it actually gets a response that shows some content, but it redirects your application. So this might also lead to some bugs and maybe you wanna see um, what happens here. So let's go ahead and define a parameter n. How many times do you want to be redirected? And then you can say response is equal to requests.get. Again, the base URL. Oh, I actually deleted the base URL. Let's just define it again real quick. Base URL is going to be equal to HTTPS colon slash slash HTTP bin dot org. And then base URL plus, and what we can do here now is we can say redirect, actually slash redirect, and then in curly brackets n, and then we can delete the origin field. I think this uh, this time we could even have one, and we can print the response.json. Actually. The response should be equal to response.json and we should only print the response. How many times do we want to be redirected? Five times. Now it's going to say, oh, actually there was an origin field. Nice. Um, but yeah, I can see that we are redirected. We can also specify to what we want to be redirected, right? So we can say here, instead of just redirect, we can say redirect dash two. And then I can say question mark URL, and I can of course then omit this end parameter here, uh, URL equals, and then I can say, for example, HTTPS colon slash slash neural nine dot com. This is a possibility here. And then you can hopefully see, uh, no, we cannot. So what's the problem here? Okay, so I think I figured out what the mistake was. I think we should not turn this into a JSON object because it actually returns HTML code. So actually you just have to say redirect to URL and then you can print response of text, not the JSON object of that. And then you get the HTML code of the website, in this case, the neural nine website. All right, so the last thing that I wanted to show you, and this is really useful um, to work with timeouts, for example, to see what happens when your script times out or when your request times out, is you can call the delay endpoint. So we can say here response response is equal to requests dot get base URL plus and then slash delay and then a number of seconds. So for example, five. And then what I want to get here is the response is equal to response dot JSON. We delete again the origin field and then we say print response. And you will see in this case, it waits five seconds, nothing happens, and then we get a response. And that's it, basically. So this is the same as just using the get endpoint, but with a delay. Now, the interesting thing is that I can use this to see what happens when I have a specific timeout. So I can say timeout uh, for the request is two seconds. And then you can see that if I just run this, this is going to give me a read timeout exception or error here. So this is also something that you might want to see in your script. What happens when I send a request to an endpoint that doesn't answer for 20 seconds and how does my application respond to it? But yeah, that's basically it. This is all in all a very useful tool. You can use different endpoints here to just see what happens when you send requests in a certain way. Maybe you have a problem in your application and instead of just troubleshooting with the actual production endpoint maybe that you're using with maybe an endpoint from another service or company, you can just use HTTP bin to see what happens when you play around with your requests a little bit. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.